Hearty good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and a very warm welcome to all of you to the Land Summit 2017 in partnership with Economic Times, Om LAI, and Gazinia Shelters. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kavya R. Chavali, and I would be taking care of the proceedings during the summit, a summit wherein over the period, period of next three days, we'll have uh, all our delegates, all of us coming together to hear interesting implementation stories as well from some of our keynote speakers, as well as all our thought leaders. Um, ladies and gentlemen, there's a wonderful saying that goes by the fact that we do not inherit land from our ancestors, we in fact borrow it from our children. So it's time to scape through, scrape through the surface, dig deep as well, and unravel all these perspectives and insights from our thought leaders. And yes, it's going to be three interesting days. I do believe that we have an extended holiday, but for the fact that all of us have come together here, it shows it means serious business. So thank you so much for joining us this morning. And on that note, it's time to get the uh, program started. Started. And to welcome you all, I'd now like to invite on stage the Vice President of OM LAI. Please put your hands together to welcome Mr. Girish Bhagat. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Honorable Minister Mr. Deepak Keshka, distinguished visiting members of LAI, respected officials of the state government of Maharashtra and its institutions, fraternity of various organizations that have supported this event, esteemed speakers and participants, honorable guests who have converged from overseas and across India, members of PLES, members of OM LAI, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> On behalf of OM LAI and our partner, The Economic Times, I extend a very warm welcome to this inaugural event of Land Summit and the conference on Make in India Drivers for Sustainable Urbanization. May I begin with a brief introduction of OM LAI. OM LAI is the Indian chapter of Lambda Alpha International, abbreviated LAI, which is a global society on land economics and provides a forum of exchange to ideas in area of land economics, land use, and its development. Our 2,400 plus members come from fields of land, economics, architecture, urban planning, social sciences, public and private policies, academia, water, law, construction engineering, realty development, heritage restoration, amongst others. The objectives of OM LAI are to introduce to India the global standards and best practices in the arena of land use, its economics, and its development. To this end, OM LAI aims to be a platform where top-notch professionals from India and across the world, working as individuals or as team clusters, can provide the know-how and expertise to support the Indian polity, Indian administrators, and Indian industry in our endeavors that Indian economic development and India's rise as global economic power is sustainable and inclusive. In the pursuit of this goal, this event aims to deliberate on ways and means of achieving India's commitment towards sustainable urbanization within the policy framework of Make in India. Ladies and gentlemen, this conference has been possible due to efforts and support of many organizations and individuals. But I would like to take this opportunity to single out one most significant contributor. On behalf of all of us, and with deep gratitude, I convey our sincere thanks to Mr. Ajay Chowdhury, the chairman of Mr. Gazania, whose unstinted and all round support have made this nation-building event possible. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, before I call on my colleague, Mr. Mayank Gandhi, to set the theme of this conference and the tone and the pitch and the deliberations of this conference of the next three days, I would like to convey that today I'm standing before you as I had to step in the shoes of our president, Mr. Anil Hatkar, who had conceived this event and worked very hard for it. Anil recently suffered a health, back, health setback and hence cannot be amongst us. A deep gratitude to him from all of us. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to all present here today. I now call upon my colleague, Mr. Mayank Gandhi, to kickstart the event. Thank you. Yeah, 
Well, yes, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have the presence of somebody who's been associated with working towards the upliftment of the underprivileged, as well as the growth of the country in projects that befit a humanitarian. And he's also currently focusing on rural upliftment of the villages in Maharashtra through the Philora Foundation and the Global Parley. So once again, can we have a round of applause for Mr. Mayank Gandhi? Namaste. Namaste. Kiya, na? Namaste. Namaste. Or ek bar. Namaste. Namaste. Ah, let's start. Namaste actually means I bow to the God within you. So like, it's been my search that how does life begin? What is that building block which makes existence possible? Similarly, we keep on, I kept on wondering, what is the source of this avoidable misery in India? So when you go on a plane, you will see those small jigsaws of land with these buns, small, small things like you would see in Europe, you would see in India. And that I think is the source, the fundamental source from which poverty starts because the land holdings are so small and every generation the land holding reduces by half if you have two children at three, if you have three. And the size of the land has become so small that it has become unviable for the farmers to live a life of dignity in the villages. And it's a myth that people want to come to cities. I work in villages. I work in the worst villages of Beat district. You tell people you want to go to Mumbai, they will say, I would rather live here in poverty than go to a city which is so alien, which is so different, which is so tough. But sometimes you have no option and then you come to cities. And cities are so unplanned that you finally go to some, with whatever savings you have of the villages, you will go to some slum lord, give him money and take a slum, pay for water, pay for toilet, pay for everything. And we look at them with so much disdain that they have come and taken over our place. Actually, they have no option. They are in terrible shape. And they pay probably more rent to the slumlord than we do. And the middle class and the lower class are fighting for that little bit of space. And the reason is because of the terrible urbanization planning, the incremental holistic, the incremental haphazard planning that happens in cities. Instead of an integrated holistic planning, there is this completely small, small integration. There is, I have looked at the all development plans earlier this time. And these are not good. And most importantly, and I'm going to say something, I hope my friends will not object. When Gandhiji came from South Africa, and he wanted to fight the war for independence, suppose he had, I'm, I'm speculating, suppose he had engaged foreign consultant to understand how to fight this independence war, what would they have told him? They would have told him, have better bullets, have strategic attacks from various sources. They would have told him how to have more bloodshed, how to kill people. Instead, Gandhi went back to the country. He traveled for three years and he created two huge weapons, Ahinsa and Satyagraha, non-violence and adherence to truth. And that echoed with the soul and the ethos of this nation. And with that weapon, we repelled the British. And with that weapon, so many other people are repelling oppressors. And this is going to increase. So when we have these foreign consultants who come in, who don't understand the soul and ethos of this nation, they come with their wonderful ideas which they have done in the West, in large countries, in countries which have different and try to put those ideas here. A bureaucrat will go abroad, he will look at wonderful cities, beautifully planned. Who is the planner of this place? Will you come to Mumbai and plan it? And he will come with his own ideas. And the country becomes worse and worse. I am not denying the... I am saying let's get the best world global case studies and put it in India. But it has to be married to the soul and ethos of this nation, the people of this nation, unless you do that, you will have an India which is as it is now or worse. 
So today I see at this juncture, at the crossroad at which we are standing, will India be a world class nation or will it keep on going at the same Hindu rate of growth, little, little growth here, there, incremental or will it be a complete major planning? I think the next three days of discussions with some wonderful speakers, opinion makers, decision makers will give some kind of a clue about where this nation should go, where this state should go, where this city should go. I thank you all for coming here and I look forward to enjoying these three days with you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Gandhi. Well, a wonderful uh, way of setting the tone, in fact, for the next three days of the summit. So